Hello and welcome back to Fred in the Shed. We're up in the Radio Shack and on this video we're looking at the new improved ATS 20 Plus. This is an upgrade from the very popular original ATS 20. On this video I don't want to get too bogged down with the operating system, with the firmware that comes on the 20 Plus because it's exactly the same as what came on the original, on the 20. So what I'll do is I'll link the original video in the description below and if you want to get really deep into it then you can go away and have a look at that. What I'm more interested in is what have they changed on this 20 plus model. So what we'll do later on in the video I'll get the two radios side by side, the old one and the new one and we'll have a look inside. We'll check out the Arduino, see if it's the same Nano as the original and we'll have a quick look around the circuit board and we'll see if we can spot the components that they've changed. Once we've had a look inside the radios we'll move on to the on-air testing. Now of course this radio does come with an external antenna jack, it's a BNC on the back. You can buy these very cheap little adapters to convert it to a 259 which you probably already have. Always best of course to use an external antenna on shortwave but on this video because I did all that on the first video I thought I would just try the telescopic whip antenna what's supplied in the box and we'll see what that brings in. Not everyone can put up an external antenna and on that basis I have in for review here a little loop antenna. This is a amplified loop antenna. I've not even really opened this yet so we'll give that a go as well and just see what we can pick up with a radio where you cannot put an outside antenna in. So all of that is coming up on the video so stay tuned let's crack into it. When the original ATS-20 launched in the UK a few years ago, it became very, very popular quickly, mostly because of the price. I think originally they were about 60 UK pounds and then they dropped to about half that. And you could pick them up for just over 30 pounds. I really like mine when I first got it. Um, I think it's quite quirky. It's a, it's a cross between a shortwave receiver and a gadget. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it does work. It does, within its limitations, it uh, does re receive shortwave. It is a an Arduino Nano based radio. We'll have a look inside in a moment, but there is a little Arduino computer in there. So it takes a different approach from shortwave receiving. And yeah, overall, um, even though the screen is very, very small, it, it is quite clear. Uh, this is a little bit small to read. But overall, I tested this, did a full video on it, and um, I found the performance was adequate. It wasn't outstanding, it did have some uh, problems, but it was adequate. However, one thing that people f quickly found, and I found this with mine, what, what let this down was the tuning encoder. And it was quite apparent when you first got this radio out of the box that this encoder was quite loose, it was quite wobbly, it didn't feel very tactile. And then what happens within a number of weeks when you use this, even with light use, is that the encoder started getting what they call bounce, where you would tune up on the display, and then after a little while, it would actually start going back the other way. It would uh, give a false reading. Uh, and yeah, and, and in the end, it became really, really frustrating. And that was such a shame that it let the radio down. Now, hats off to ATS-20 because they responded pretty quick to the complaints that were coming in from because of that encoder and what they've done now on the ATS 20 plus and I think this is probably the biggest change and the best change is they've fitted a far nicer encoder and they say it's the same internal encoder that they've fitted on the big brother on the ATS 25 and I've had no issues at all with this ATS 25 encoder. I've got the version 1 here I've also downstairs got the latest version which we'll be testing it on a future video but no the encoder on the ATS 25 absolutely fine and this one straight out of the box it that feels so much better I mean it's it's hard to come across on camera there but I can feel play in this original encoder it just feels very wobbly this one nothing like that it feels very tactile and so far when I've been fiddling with this, it hasn't missed a beat. So hopefully they have cured that. It was the biggest problem that unfortunately let the radio down. Looking on the front fascia 
of the radios. I, I really can't see anything that's changed. Both of these are running the version 1.5 software. That's what the 20 plus came shipped with. You can um, update these. You can update the firmware. I believe there's a 2.5 version and a 3.0 version. Um, personally, I'm not sure. I mean, as they seem to have improved the signal meter, they, they, these have got a built-in very basic signal meter, which doesn't really work to be honest they seem to improve that but i'm not sure i think it might be a step back i personally like the display on these it is small but there is enough information there the rest of the controls and the buttons to me look exactly the same but they have changed a couple of things on the back so let's have a quick look on the rear looking on the back of the radios there's not much has changed really and i think that's a bit of a shame to be honest You've still got this little switch here to go from FM and to AM and sideband. A couple of times I've forgot to switch this and wondered why I'm not getting any sideband reception. I think they could have done away with that. If they're trying to save money, I think they could have done away with that and incorporated that on the new programming so they automatically switched. Then you've got the BNC. They've stuck with the BNC connector. Okay, personally, I would have liked a PL259, and I think if they'd done away with that switch, there would be room to mount that on the new unit. I just think a 259 is a much more secure antenna connection. I guess it is what it is. And then the headphone socket, this was a gripe originally when I'd done the review, it's still stuck on the back of the unit, and really, there's plenty of room now to fit a headphone socket on here. They could just maybe put it on the bottom there or over here or something um yeah i like to use headphones a lot and i would prefer that on the front it's a shame they've not done that the power switch is the same and then this is a bit odd on the new model um you've still got the very old usb connection port there for it says for downloads so that's going to be to connect into a computer to update the firmware that you might want to do and then you've got a more modern USB-C but that says it's for charge only and again if you're trying to save a few pennies uh, in the build why have two USB ports it, it, it just means they should have maybe updated the board I don't understand why they've done that but anyway they have but it's quite nice that you can charge it with a USB-C because I really struggled to find this uh, older type of USB-C lead when I was trying to charge up the new one so yeah I, th I think they've missed a few opportunities uh, on the back they could have improved it hopefully if they carry on with this model um, that might come on a new redesign. I'm going to have a quick look what comes in the box. Now if you're new to these ATS radios you're in for a little bit of a shock because these are almost like a Kickstarter project. You get very little in the box and it's a bit of a gripe of mine but there is no instructions whatsoever how to use the radio so it relies you on you going online and the internet and YouTube videos much like my first review it will show you how to use the radio. So really all you get in the box is the radio itself. You do get a telescopic whip quite a nice size about 60 centimeters telescopic whip antenna with the bnc connector um this really is only going to be used to set up the radio it will work on fm it will pick up some of the stronger shortwave radio stations like radio china but really to get the best out of the radio you need to connect a, a long wire pre preferably outside it's a bit of a waste really just using this what I found with these in the past is they start off quite nice and tight but uh, after a few hours use this bush in here does loosen up a little bit and they, they tend to flop around so they're not ideal but again everything is a budget. We're going to have a quick look inside these radios now. Now you know I'm not an electronics expert so probably not qualified really to do this but I just want to see if there are any physical changes we can spot which shows that the 20 plus has had some development. As we open up the cases yeah that's pretty much conclusive so the loudspeakers um, are exactly the same it's an 8 ohm 3 watt full size speaker that's not a bad thing it wasn't a bad speaker in the first place and yeah they're connected with some silicon glue here we go then so we've got the older 20 on the right and the newer 20 plus on the left i'll put little numbers up on the screen right what can we see so here's the adreno nano and they look exactly the same that they are branded as a nano so maybe they are using original chips and not a cloned version 
not really sure. Now what's interesting on the new one, you can see that's the older USB connection there and that's going straight into the Arduino. So the one on the back, that newer USB is purely for charging. It's a pity they've not incorporated them together, it seems a bit counterproductive to me, but uh, yeah, that's the old one. Moving across on the newer model here, we've got a little connection uh, here we've got two wires coming out going to that that's not on the on the original I've got no idea what that is those are the speaker connectors as far as I'm aware so I'm not quite sure what that is but that, that's slightly different all of this is the same and then when we get over to this side we can start to see a couple of changes here firstly we have something that looks like a capacitor to me here which isn't on the original and then we've got a new IC chip. Now I do know that they were having problems on FM with selectability so I wonder if that's what they've improved. So I wonder if you've got a smoothing capacitor there and I wonder if that is perhaps a amplifier with maybe a built-in uh, bandpass filter or something to try and improve, improve the selectability and also stop any breakthrough, which I believe they were getting a problem with FM. Hopefully that also is relevant to AM and sideband. I think the tuning could have been a little bit smoother on the old one. It did kind of chuff along a little bit. We'll find out when I test it, I'll test it on receive, but it, hopefully that's not just purely for FM because I think that's a little bit of a waste to be honest. Moving down, everything does seem the same. It's quite interesting. If you look at the original here, you've got these um, resistors here. They're quite big and chunky and they've all been replaced now with these very, very small surface mount micro resistors. It just shows you that if you were to try and take on a home repair with this, you've got far less chance of success than you had than with the original. Everything's becoming very, very small. Moving down here, uh, the lithium battery, you can just see poking through, that will be the same. I don't, Im I don't imagine it's any bigger. I think it's just in a slightly different location. So what we have now, we've um, got the front control board and that's connected on the new one by the same uh, flexible cable. But in addition, there is a second flexible cable and that goes to this new encoder. What's interesting here, if you look on the board, it almost looks like they were preparing for that. You can see a couple of terminals there. So this new encoder, and this is really where all of the upgrades um, have been made, you can see the depth. If you look at the depth on compared to the original, which is very flush to the main board, you can, you can see that it looks a lot, lot much more robust. Certainly looks a chunkier piece of kit, and it's got its own connection. As far as the main control board goes, it looks exactly the same, the same amount of um, switches. The only thing is, no, it's got the same. I was just about to say that there's a, there's a breakout wire on, on here, but it's also it's also on the original. I don't know if that's an earth or something. It, always, it looks a bit how you're doing, doesn't it? Like, like maybe forgot something, but maybe that's a separate earth. So, yeah, a, few, a couple of changes, nothing, um, nothing dramatic. Okay. Well, that's a quick look inside my uneducated opinion. And now we're going to put the covers back on, connect this to an antenna, and let's see what the receive sounds like. So here's my setup. We're just using the standard whip antenna that is supplied with the radio, with nothing fancy. Got it just inside the window, as you can see. And it's receiving straight away, straight, <laughs> straight out of the box. We've got ham radio coming in, a little bit in and out, as you'd expect with shortwave. But yeah, we've got some ham coming in. So we're going to set the camera up on the tripod and have a little flick around and let's see what we get. My name is Yuri, Yankee United, Romeo, India. And my goal is Echo Bravo 515. Thank you very much for the United Contact 73. Wish you all the best to you and yours. And good luck at 2024. This is Echo Bravo 515. It's a bit too dry, but the sun came too good for today. Goed, je kan uh, verder dan heb je niet gehoord, had ik begrepen. Hè? Nou, dan gaat even verder dan kijken of hij wel uh, jouw rapport te geven. Hè? Ferdinand, D2 en Vier, Pedro Kilo, dan van Romeo Ferdinand, had je elkaar onder gehoord over? Ja, ik kan hem prima verstaan, hoor. Absoluut geen probleem. Uh, zelfs uh, ik 
Ja, groetjes wel. Ja, toch een beetje frustrerend hoor. Het is jammer. Maar eh. Uh, Nieuwe man. Oké, okay, je hebt vrije roze klaus die zakken en de zin dit willen. We wisten je kan het te moeilijk in te jekken. Je ziet het ook wel eens. Vrije is de eerste door Volken Klaus. Wie. We're going to go over to Shortwave now. With Shortwave, generally on the broadcast band, there's um, there's no problem with power coming in from the stations, but you do get interference, QRM, local interference. With the loop, in theory, because it's directional, you should be able to homing on the station and tune out a lot of the uh, interference. This little mag loop that um, came in from Bangor, it's also got a pre-amplifier so you can increase the signal. So what you're going to hear now on the shortwave is coming through that little tiny mag loop. For wing-wing cooperation and uh, all our results. Exactly. Thanks, gentlemen. You've been listening to Road Today, the panel discussion on China's ice and a snow tourism home. After the break, we'll continue our discussion. Stay tuned. <laughs> of hope. For more information, visit us on the web at awr.org. The following program is in Tigrinya. Radio Adventist Alam Laka Dimsetespa Nguli Seviu. Radio Adventist Alam Laka Avedisawa Kabzir Kib Studio Nata Dalos Garu Programming. War was a crime against humanity. He said this even as he reiterated a call for peace in Ukraine and the Middle East and urging the faithful not to forget those suffering due to the cruelty of war in several parts of the world. Let us pray that those who have power over these conflicts reflect on the fact that war is not the way to resolve them because it sows death among civilians and destroys cities and infrastructure. A card and a checkbook. Just reach out to ICICI Bank UK and they have a solution for your banking in the UK or in India. ICICI Bank UK. Ham hena. Hai alapka. ICICI Bank UK PLC is authorized by the PRA and regulated by the FDA and PRA. And our production services are subject to the Bank of India rules and application laws in India. TNC supply. Travel with Star Tours and visit Scotland, Snowdonia, Lake District, Cornwall or choose from one of our day trips. Enjoy delicious Indian meals, sightseeing and accommodations. <laughs> Really beautiful observation. I think that shape is very intentional. It fits perfectly into the back of the child. And when you think about Lawrence's reflections on his life in Harlem and his Harlem community, he does talk about the ways in which children are part of a larger system of care. In the body of the song, and he would do individually. And at the end, we would have a... Uh, showdown <laughs> and see who won you know but uh we decided to call it a tie but uh, yeah we went at it and don, don felder and i were always real good at that it was pretty competitive the priority the pain the topic of conversation is clear it is the hostages who are still kept in gaza in uh, atrocious uh, conditions, many of whom have been sexually assaulted. In fact, Israel is actually preparing now, now for the possibility that some of the hostages, if they are ever released, will come out and be pregnant. What year it was? If you know, then let me know. 07448 or else email corestudio at likeradio.com. Gold Rate is brought to you by Gold Bank London. Checking in on the latest gold rates for you here on, I've got Leica, gold currently trading at 51 pounds and 68 pence per gram. We'll keep you up to date with the latest gold rates on your Leica radio. Conclusion time then. Good points and bad points. Well, let's start with a positive. I've had this in the shack now, oh, it's just over three weeks and I've been playing with it. And this little encoder, it hasn't missed a beat. I really do think they've nailed it and it feels exactly the same as what you get on the more expensive ATS25 model. So that is a massive plus point because on the previous model, by the time I got to this stage, the encoder was failing. So yeah, thumbs up for them to have replaced that. Overall shortwave performance is pretty good, isn't it? For something that costs just over 35 pounds, 
all mode, including sideband. And this model was pretty well on tune. I very seldom had to use the BFO. However, it's not perfect, and I do think there are things they could improve if they do a further updated model. When it comes down to the tuning, it is a bit laborious. And it's a good job that they've fixed that encoder because you have to use it a lot. There are no memory presets on the radio. It is all manual tune. Now they do have preset bands which you can click up and down with these two buttons. That's quite good. It, 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 it has got the hand bands preset and also it does a wide scope on the shortwave broadcast band. But when it comes down to tuning, you only have three step rates. That's one kilohertz, 5 kilohertz and 10 kilohertz. It would be nice if they included a 100 kilohertz for the broadcast band. It would make tuning a little less laborious. Also, when it comes down to sideband performance, it's quite good that you just push in the encoder and then you go to the BFO or clarifier if you like, and then you can finally adjust the stations. But when you're on the AM on the shortwave band, I think they could have used that function that if you clicked it, and you could simply jump on the digits here. So if you click it once, you would adjust the 1 kilohertz, then the 10 kilohertz, then the 100 kilohertz, and so on and so forth. That's normally how a radio tunes, and that way you can get to your desired frequency a lot quicker. Another thing that I think they can improve on is when you're on the shortwave broadcast band, when you tune quickly with the encoder, which you do a lot of that, it does mute the volume and that way you can miss some of the weaker stations. I didn't notice it on sideband. On sideband the volume stays up so I'm not quite sure why it does that. I think the original did that also. When it comes down to the AGC, the automatic gain control, like the previous model and or to be honest like all of these Adreno based shortwave radios, it, it is a little bit crude when you switch the AGC on, it can be overpowering. Some of the stronger signals do overload the radio. I generally leave it off. It does have an attenuation device if you do get very, very strong signals. Again, I think that could be improved on a newer model. One final criticism, and I don't want to be too critical on this radio for the price, but again, on 11 meter CB band, they've missed out the FM receive. That only used to affect us in the UK, but of course now the FCC have allowed America FM as well on CB, so it's it, it's a growing, expanding frequency. It seems to be these Adreno radios just don't include it. It wasn't included on the original ATS-25. I do have the newer model of this downstairs that I'll be reviewing in a few weeks' time. I have a feeling it's going to be the same thing. No 11-meter FM reception. And, uh, yeah, that is a shame. It can't be difficult just to reprogram it. Now, of course, you can update the firmware on this. I have seen and read people that have done that. It seems to be a little bit rocky. Some people have had problems when they've updated the firmware. I'll be honest with you, unless it does include FM, and I don't think it does, I would stick with the standard firmware. It seems to work best. I, I can't really criticise it, so I would stick with that. So, yeah, if, if it had FM, it would just be that little bit better. Final conclusions then, is this just a little gadget that you can buy that happens to pick up shortwave or is it a viable shortwave receiver? Well I think now that encoder problem is fixed, I think this is a viable little shortwave radio. Still comes in at half the price of its big brother, the ATS25. Now this was sent in from Banggood. I'll leave a buying link in the description if you want to go away and check it out. Um, Banggood are due to have a sale soon. I think it might start in March, but this radio could be included in that. So you might get this radio even cheaper than it already is. That's it for the ATS20+. Plus. On the shortwave side of things, I do have a lot of products coming up over the next few weeks. We're going to have a closer look at this GA450, this amplified loop antenna. It does claim to have a 20 dBi increase in signal, I'm not quite sure about that. But if you live in a flat or a condo like I used to, and there's no way you can put up a long wire, 
This could be your answer to receive shortwave indoors. Very, very good at rejecting QRM, man-made noise, which is the bane of a shortwave listener if you haven't got an outside antenna. So look out for that video coming up very shortly. Also, I've got the newer ATS25 downstairs. We want to have a look at that. The new one does have CW, Morse code decoding, so um, I want to test that out. Finally, I have got a much bigger passive loop antenna just only very very cheap i think it's about 13 pounds um, again that's for indoor use you'd hang that up in a window that'll all be coming up over the next few weeks on Fred in the shed but as for now as always thank you ever so much for sticking with the video your views are appreciated i'm a small channel i don't get many views so there is the thumbs up from Fred in the shed for your view time as always if you before you pop off if you take a second just give me a thumbs up down below i would appreciate that but as for now please 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 stay warm because it's chilly at the moment stay safe look after each other and i'll catch you on the next one cheers guys